Gators Breakdown, the Gators Fan Podcast, because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown Podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters, and you can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. I'll have Blake Alderman on from Swap 24-7 to go even further into the world of recruiting for the Gators and, and look ahead to this week's visits for the final visit weekend before early signing period and uh, we'll look take a look at their early signing period too with Blake and maybe kind of see who he feels really good about the Gators getting as far as his uncommitted prospects going dive into the whole Lakeland situation again and see uh, where Blake st- stands with uh, Zipper and Summerall before they take uh, their trips to Miami and remember you can find Gators Breakdown on newsforjacks.com slash Gators Breakdown there you'll find all the Gators Breakdown episodes as well as articles from the News for Jack sports team. Also listen on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and Spotify. And when using those services, please share, rate, and review the show. And on social media, follow Gators Breakdown on Twitter and Facebook at Gators Breakdown. Blake Alderman from Swamp 24-7 joining me here on Gators Breakdown. Blake, we're uh, coming off the biggest recruiting weekend Mullen has had so far in the early part of his uh, head coaching career at Florida. Big time targets. Uh, the Gators are still trying to wrap up going into next week's early signing period. Let's start with the biggest storyline in the Lakeland duo, Keon Zipper, Lloyd Summerall. We all heard the Miami gossip over the weekend, and there was nothing ever really concrete there. The, the pair had their visits this weekend, and now coming off the visits, some more 24 7 crystal balls started flowing in for the, the pick to be Florida for these guys. So how did the visit go for these guys? And, and if you could shed some light on why we saw some, we've seen the recent rush of crystal balls for the duo, and are they as much of a package deal as everyone thinks? You know, I think to start off, the visit went really well. Um, these are guys that have been to Florida a lot, um, you know, living only a couple hours away. So, you know, they, they already knew what to expect from Florida, but obviously coming back on you know, the official visit, you know, you kind of roll out the red carpet, you know, your family, it's it's for the family, you know, it, it, they bring them over there, you know, they, they really kind of spell out academics, you know, this, that, and the other for kids. So, you know, I think it was a really good visit for both. Um, I, I think that Florida has been the odds-on favorite for both for quite a while. Um, I think that here as we kind of approach closer to signing day, I think the one guy that I'm keeping an eye on is the tight end Keon Zipperer. I think Florida right now is the team to beat. I feel pretty comfortable saying that, but he will visit Miami this coming weekend, another team that is Florida's biggest competition. I know he really likes Coach Hartley, the tight end coach at Miami. So, you know, I- I'm keeping an eye on this visit, but for right now I feel good about the Gators. For Summerall, I also really like Florida a lot, too. I think the scheme fit is really something that's appealing to him. We saw the viral pictures of he and his father taking pictures in the jersey. Um, you know, you know, I think that they really did a good job of kind of selling the family. You know, uh, Summerall has come to Florida quite a few times over the last year, but his father has only been there once for the, the little cookout that they had back in the spring. So, you know, it was good for him to get back and get to, you know, kind of get acclimated with everything. So, you know, I, I do think that Florida is a team to beat for both. They're saying a package deal. I think in their mind they may – I'm mean, you know, I'm not saying that they, they're absolutely not going to end up at the same school, but I don't think it's as dead set as what, you know, a package deal you'd think. I think I could see them both end up at different schools. I could see them end up at the same schools. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that it's, you know, a concrete type of thing that, it's, you know, they're absolutely going to the same school together. I think ideally they'd like that. But if something works out better for one or the other – they're going to go, you know, they're going to take that route. You know, they're not going to let, you know, one guy make their decision for them. Um, another guy at Lakeland, too, it's actually a Lakeland trio. They're going to have a four-star offensive lineman at Diaby Hammond on campus this weekend. Really like Florida for him as well. So Florida can really pull off this sweep of getting three guys um, in this class alone. I think two out of three could happen, too. I, 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 like I said, I feel really good about Hammond. I feel really good about Summerall. Zipper I feel good about right now, but I don't think that that's a concrete – uh, not as good as I feel about the other one, so to say. Blake, you, you mentioned Hammond there, and uh, it would be another offensive lineman commit for the Gators if they were to get him uh, when it was all said and done. Um, it's pretty dead set and pretty clear Florida really wants to shore up that position. Absolutely. You know, I think that they really look like they need some help there. You know, I think that it was a unit that started playing a lot better as, as the season kind of went on, but. You know, uh, they're going to probably lose some guys uh, to graduation. I know Jawan Taylor is one guy that, you know, he could lead to go early to the NFL if he chose to. Um, so, you know, that they're uh, really going to need some guys to kind of fill in this. And I think that seems to be kind of the focal point of their class going forward. Six guys now. 
in the class now. Obviously, Hammond is the one that they can add. Um, Leading up to the early signing period, the, the, the official visit this weekend will be kind of big there to, you know, kind of let his parents see everything. Um, but, yeah, you know, offensive line is definitely a position they want to fill. Um, you know, have a lot of guys on there. That, I feel like John Hennessy has been the, the guy on the Florida staff that has worked the hardest this recruiting season. I feel like the guy is in, a, in home in a different state every other day. So, you know, he's definitely putting in some work trying to finish up his class. Absolutely there. Uh, Blake Tyreek Stevenson made his way to campus over the weekend as well. And we know the Gators uh, look in great shape for Chris Steele and hopefully Kyrie Elam as well when it's all said and done there. Have also targeted Mar Marcus Banks, had him on campus this past weekend as well. Already have Jadon Hill and Chester Kimbrough in the fold as cornerbacks as well uh, as far as being committed. Uh, did the Gators get back in it with Stevenson? And how might the numbers work out there? You know, I think that they have done a good job of getting back in there. Um, I think that Mel Tucker leaving Georgia and Manny Diaz being linked to the Temple head coaching job can help Florida even more. But, you know, I think heading into the visit, they had a lot of work to do. And I think that, you know, heading out of the visit, I think that Florida, Florida wouldn't be my pick, so to say, right now. You know, I don't know how things are going to play out over the next uh, nine, eight days, something like that, whatever it is leading up to signing day. Um, but right now, I think Florida did a good job of impressing him. Um, I think that they – it was a pretty distant, far off from being at his top two. It was, it's been Miami and Georgia forever, and then it was kind of a big group of everyone after that. I think Florida has done a good job of kind of shorting that gap, getting themselves into play, but there still is a lot of things that need to play out here. Georgia, he really likes them a lot. He's visited. It's Kirby Smart's defense eventually You know when it all plays out and you look at the grand scheme of things, but there's always that question of, Who's going to be the D.C.? Who's going to be there? Uh, there's nobody there now. I, I think that they need to get somebody in there and figure out what they're going to do there. Um, you know, in Miami, obviously, if they lose their defensive coordinator, that's going to be a big thing. He will officially visit Miami this weekend, and I'm sure that's going to be one of the biggest topics of discussions for him, and he's going to want some answers for that question. So, you know, I think that Ford did a good job of moving back into the picture here. They're certainly setting themselves up in striking distance with all these questions of coordinators at these other schools, but there's still a lot of things that need to play out. Absolutely. I definitely agree there. Uh, one guy I'd like to have in the fold, but uh, not necessarily sure. Gators have made up enough ground there. I just brought up Kyrie Elam. Uh, he's coming off of a visit to Miami. Um, now he's going to be waiting until February to sign, but uh, did Miami make up ground to throw themselves into the mix with Florida and Georgia? You know, I think that they've thrown themselves into the mix, but I, I don't, I wouldn't, I'm not ready to say that they're sitting, they're still sitting at the kids' table. I mean, we're not sitting at the adults' table yet. So, you know, <laughs> I think that they're, they're in it. They, they've, certainly made a charge here um, over the last couple weeks, you know, going in home with him a lot. They've been talking with him a lot. They obviously convinced him to take an official visit. I don't think that this recruitment is really going to be interesting until January. Whenever that contact period opens back up, he starts taking some official visits. I feel right now, I think Florida and Georgia are the two main schools in there for me that, that are really ones that he's looking at. I think Miami, I think Florida State is in there as kind of a second tier school, if you will. If you will. Um, but you know, I still think Florida and Georgia is, are, are the two big ones here. Again, this is another guy kind of going back to Tyreek Stevenson. Georgia doesn't have a defensive coordinator, and that's one of his bigger recruiters there. That was the, one of the guys that he has a really good relationship with. So, you know, he's going to have a lot of questions for there, too. Um, I, I, I would assume, I would hope by the time he takes an official in January that, you know, they would have a, a defensive coordinator in there. So, it's still, you know, Georgia's still not quite out of the woods. They've got to figure out some things, and, you know, they, they can – uh, get him on campus again. He took an unofficial visit for a game and really liked it, brought his mom, brought his dad. So, you know, Florida, he's been there a lot. The official will be big. I think Florida has the lead right now only because the Mel Tucker departure. I think Georgia has been the leader for a while, but that loss obviously um, has left a lot of questions for him. So I really like Florida right now. Um, but, again, this is going to be a recruitment that really, really heats up in January leading up to February. All right, Blake Alderman from Swamp 24-7 joining me here on Gators Breakdown. Blake, five-star running back Trey Sanders will be making his way to campus this weekend to visit Florida. Coming off of a trip to Georgia where the Bulldogs, you know, they have some confidence uh, that they uh, have given him something to think about at least. Uh, two things here. Do you really think uh, he hasn't made up his mind already towards Alabama? And are he and uh, offensive lineman Evan Neal as much of a package deal as some think? You know, I'm not quite sure that they're a package deal. Um, you know, I, I think that they have a lot of similar schools, so they could end up at the same school. But, again, I, I, it's not like, you know, oh, well, if you go here, I'm going there. I, I don't think it's quite like that. I, I think at the end of the day, they're going to make the best decision for them. Could it be at the same school? Yes. I don't think it's, 
you know, necessarily plan to go that way. But, you know, he, he will go to Florida this weekend. I, I agree with you. I think Georgia gave him something to think about this past weekend. In all accounts, it seems like that visit went really well. Um, I, I think the departure of Mike Loxley from, uh, from Alabama has sort of given him some questions, too, because, again, it, it's always – you know, Nick Saban is at Alabama. Alabama is going to run like a well-oiled machine with Nick Saban is there. But it's always the question of who's the coach? Who's going to be calling the plays? Who's going to be, you know, what is the offense going to change? There's a lot of questions that pop in these guys' minds. So I think that that's sort of what's happening now as, as they creep closer to the early signing day. He's going to be an early enrollee. You know, he's going to want to know who's there. So I think that it sort of cracked the door. I felt very confident for the longest time that he's going to Alabama. Um, but this obviously has thrown a little bit of a twist into there. Florida can make a big press this weekend. They have his brother as a preferred walk-on um, on the team now. I'm sure he's going to spend a ton of time with him. You know, he's been to Florida for a game twice this season to watch his brother there. So I think Florida is in there. They're in striking distance. They need the visit to go well, um, get him there, you know, kind of show him, you know, this is how life could be while you're on campus with your brother here. So I, I think that Florida has a lot of things in their corner with this visit coming this weekend. But I do think a lot of things, too, is, you know, everyone is still chasing Alabama there, I think. I, I think, despite the questions, I think Alabama is still at the top. Alabama has been keeping another running back in D.J. Williams out of Sebring Warren. I've been waiting to see if they offer D.J. I think if they offer D.J. Williams over at Alabama, I think that that means they don't feel as confident on Trey Sanders. And obviously with a couple of days left till the dead period ends, they haven't offered him yet. So that, that's kind of the thing I'm keeping an eye on. Georgia made a big press this weekend. Florida has a really good chance to make a big press this weekend, but I still think everyone's chasing Alabama. And uh, Trey Sanders might be – this next question I want to ask you, and maybe we can shed some light on, he might fall into this category, but is there a surprise commit for this early signing period? Uh, who could you see that being with all the recent visits, the upcoming visits? Uh, you know, not necessarily saying this guy will end up in the class, but if it, it, is there one maybe we should just keep an eye out for? You know, I think Sanders is probably the guy if I had to pick one. And, you know, I don't necessarily think that, you know, oh, yeah, he's definitely going to be in the class. Watch out for it. But I think that with all these questions kind of late, and, you know, the thing with Tyreek Stevenson and, and Akair Elam is, you know, their head coaches, um, you know, they, they, it's their defense. You know, it's, you know, with uh, with Georgia and, and Tyreek, you know, it's Kirby Smart's defense regardless if Mel Tucker's gone. You know, he's kind of the defensive scheme there. So, and and it's kind of on the other foot with Sanders is, you know, that's the offensive coordinator. You know, that's your play caller. That's, you know, kind of the, the focal point of the offense. So I think that that's kind of the thing where there's more realistic questions, if you will, there. And I think that that could be the guy to maybe slide into the class and be like a surprise guy, maybe, if you will. But, you know, I don't think it's a dead set thing that he's going to end up at Florida. You know, I don't. No, don't quote me, oh, well, Blake said this, but you know, I do think that, uh, you know, they have a real chance there, and I, I don't think it's just, just a trip, you know. I, I think that there's real legitimate interest. Yeah, Blake, it's weird how this early signing periods turn out. You know, Florida's going to be bringing a lot of their numbers for their whole class. You know, will be decided probably by, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in that whole early signing period. And you know, it doesn't really leave a whole, if they get a lot of their targets, doesn't really leave a whole lot of room when February rolls around. Absolutely. You know, I think that, in a couple of days, we're going to have a really good idea of, you know, where Florida's class is, I think, is a big bulk of them. Um, you know, I think all but maybe a hand, small handful of commits are are not planning to sign early. Um, so there's definitely some questions there, you know, that they're going to see, you know. You always wonder why a guy isn't signing early, but, you know, some guys, you know, want to take some visits and, you know, this, that, and the other. I know uh, Riley Simon's one of them, just wants to sign with his teammates in February all together as one. So, you know, I do think that they're going to have an idea of where things kind of stand right now. The one question that I think we're going to have linger over into maybe the January contact period is, you know, what is Florida going to do along the defensive line? Because right now I feel really good that they can flip four stars to think again, Derek Hunter, who will sign early and is working still on enrolling early, so I think he's waiting on a test score. Um, I think they have a really good shot to flip him. Um, but then, you know, they've got a lot of guys that – are not playing the sign early that they have on their board that they're trying to flip. You know, Nathan Pickering, the four-star defensive end committed to uh, Mississippi State. Um, you've got Jaron Handy, another four-star committed to Auburn. You know, a couple guys like that along the defensive line that Florida's going to have to flip, and they're, you know, certainly taking their shot, and they're going to try to. So I think that that's the biggest storyline for me in January, at least right now, top of my head, is, you know, they've got a lot of defensive line guys that they're going to try to flip. So, and, you know, I think that they're going to continue to kind of press those guys into January. So, but, you know, overall, I think we're going to have a really good idea. More, you know, the, the large majority of this class is going to be done in December and signed, done and over with. 
All righty, and uh, the Gators class will be it'll be fighting for a top ten finish, Blake. But it seems the positive mojo from this nine and three season that the Gators uh, just had and is still working towards that tenth win against Michigan. But it really kind of seems maybe the positive mojo from the nine and three season could be paying off for these twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one class. Absolutely, and you know, I think you, you look how quick the twenty twenty one class. I feel like you know for a minute it was nobody in there, and you blink your eye, and I think what is there three or four commits in there now. For 2020, or excuse me, there is for 2021 class in there. 2020, obviously picking up. The thing about the 2020 class, I think that's really interesting, is that in a lot of areas that have been kind to Florida, where it's pro Florida areas, are really loaded. You know, guys right outside of campus. Florida's done a really good job of getting guys in those, you know, Alcala, you know, Marion County kind of guys right around the campus. You know, Tampa has some guys. Um, you know. Really favorable areas where Florida can, you know, truly try to make a run in 2020. So I think 2020 is shaping up to be a really good class. And that is coming off of these guys didn't know how Florida's going to look. You see a 9-3, and three, you know, 10-3 and three season there. Definitely catches some eyes. If Florida backs things up with another really good season next year, I think that the 2020 class can be really special. Blake, I know it's busy with all the recruiting stuff going on, so I can't thank you enough for joining me here. Well, what you guys got coming up on Swamp 24-7 in the next week or so? Oh, man, everything and anything. You know, we're going to be starting this up. You know, the, the practice is open. There's some open practices this weekend in Gainesville for the for the Florida-Michigan Bowl game, so we'll have tons of stuff there. Um, obviously, official visitors. Uh, this past weekend, we're still cranking out a couple more things. Um, you know, this weekend, there's going to be another batch of official visitors. The coaches are still on the road hitting their trail hard. You know, they're they're been in a living room or at a high school for the last, what, like 16 days? you know, straight hitting the recruiting trail. So they're still at it. You know, we'll have lots of updates on where you can find the coaches around the country and in the, in the state of Florida. Um, official visitors this coming weekend. So it's, it's a really busy time here on Swamp 24-7. No, all right. That's Blake Alderman from Swamp 24-7 joining me here on Gators Breakdown. Blake, thank you so much. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. So uh, as, of, as of this recording, you know, we'll talk some more recruiting here, but uh, as of this recording, uh, the Gators are ranked 20th in the nation uh, in recruiting with 18 commits. That is good for 10th in the SEC a week before early signing period. 10 four-stars, eight three-stars. And I'm going to hit on a, a few topics before I go here, and, and that I'm sure will also be talked about in the next week or so when Florida gets their signees and the new guys come rolling in uh, to, to be Gators. And I want to go back to this past weekend, and a lot of people were kind of worried because Florida didn't, it wasn't out there and publicized that, that Florida got commitments from this past weekend. But look, that, that was expected. A lot of the targets that Florida is going after, especially that Lakeland duo, you know, a lot of people wanted to, to kind of come out of that weekend with those guys in the fold, but th those guys were always going to wait until they took this last trip to Miami coming up this weekend and sign in the early signing period. Uh, they weren't going to make anything public. It was really expected that. Now, what, would you have liked to maybe blow them away so much that you come out of that and, and they don't take that trip to Miami? Yeah, but nobody really ever thought that was going to be the case. Nobody would thought that was that, that could really happen. So I, I do not take it as a negative at all that Florida didn't come out of the weekend with some, with some public commits. Now, I, I, I have no idea that any of them give a silent to Florida and, and the staff. Even if they did, I'm not very high on silent commitments. and we, They don't usually they look this close to the finish line. They, may, they, they, mean, they do probably do mean a whole lot more than if you get a silent commitment back in April or May. But still, uh, public commitments are a little stronger, you know, probably not much stronger, not that much stronger, but still a little stronger but than, than these silent commits. Did Florida get any this past weekend? I don't know. They, they could have, but you know, not, don't feel too good about silence just in general, but this close to the finish line, this close to early signing period, uh, a commitment you know, would, would be stronger. But I don't think it means that they're not coming. I think it means I, I still think Florida is in pretty good shape there uh, when it's all said and done with those two guys and some of the targets that uh, the, these that uh, the commitments that Florida already has were, were going after this past weekend. So don't take it as a negative sign that this past weekend we come out of the visits and on Monday, Tuesday, we haven't heard anything about guys being in the fold. They were going to wait and we'll see uh, we'll see some of those guys I'm sure sign with the Gators during this early signing period that starts next week. Now, another popular topic going around is uh, the Florida-Georgia uh, recruiting gap uh, right now. And we know, it, look, it can't continue. Uh, we know that, and it, 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 but uh, Georgia gets another five-star offensive lineman <laughs> this week. And uh, Georgia has 19 commits right now, 
four five stars, 13 four stars, at 17 of the 19 that are four stars and five stars uh, for this Georgia Bulldogs team. You know, your biggest division and, and conference rival. Yes, Kirby still has, has much to learn as the game day coach, but you're seeing him to be able to compete for titles just based on the talent that he's bringing in. So you know, go back to, to this past year's Florida Georgia game, and the prevailing thought was Mullen outcoached Kirby. And we heard that a lot from, from the Gator side. Some, you know, even national riders had, had went that far as well. And look, that may be true. And, and I know C.J. Henderson was out that game as well. But it was talent that ultimately, that was the difference in that game. You know, Mullen will close the gap somewhat when he gets his style of guys. But to consistently have a 50-50 you know, shot or better at beating Georgia, winning the East, competing for conference in the, in the college football playoff consistently, Florida is, you know, Florida's going to have to start getting the top 100 four stars and five star players that are out there. You know, coaching can only get you so far, and you know, talent can only get you so far. You got to have the combo, no matter how good of a coach you are. And, and look, I, I know it's an uphill battle, and it won't happen overnight. I knew that from the get go. Uh, you know, this class is going about as I uh, expected, especially after the slow start that it got off to. But you look at the 24/7 Sports rankings right now. In the top four teams in the rankings, Alabama, Georgia, Texas A&M, LSU, four SEC teams at the top with a week, uh, with a week to go before the early signing period. You know, now two of those Florida plays every year in, in Georgia and LSU, and then you will have to deal with either Alabama, LSU, or Texas A&M in the a a SEC championship game. Uh, you know, if you get that far. Now, this isn't to say it, it can't be done. That's never what we're saying on here, and that's no, not what I'm saying. But to consistently, consistently win big. Take the path of least resistance. And, and I think the Gators can get there with a good base in this class, and hopefully some surprises in the next week or so, in a couple months leading in, into February, you know, to, to go along with great starts in the 20 and 2021 class. The Gator, I, I, I can't say this enough. The Gators have the right X's and O's coach in Dan Mullen. They absolutely have that part. Now let's compare it with some top talent, and I think we really got something special. Dan Mullen is a great coach, and I, I firmly believe that. But if you want to you want to go compete, you want to start winning titles. Let's pair some great coaching with some great talent, and you know Florida Florida will be back to where we expect them to be. Florida will be back, uh, you know, sooner in you know two three seasons there. I know it's not going to happen overnight, and you know there, there's a lot of thought out there. You know, the, it's got to happen quick because it, it does. A lot of the time, you see quick results out of the, out of the best. Uh, that the SEC's had to offer. Urban Meyer come in and win the SEC and, and national championship his second year. Nick Saban going competing and having an undefeated regular season in his second year. You know, it, it just, it, those are guys that maybe fairly, unfairly, you're going to get compared to. You know, Kirby Smart is winning the SEC in his second year. Uh, a lot of coaches come in here and, and, and you know kind of right away if they're going to be ultimately, ultimately be successful. And I'm not saying Mullen has to go win the SEC or, or make a college football playoff spot next year. But, you know, uh, and I think we'll see. We'll see tangible progress that makes us feel like Dan Mullen can continue to be the guy on the trail, on the field. Uh, I think we're seeing it in uh, the 2020, 2021 class. Got guys are getting excited uh, for this Gator finish uh, or for, for this Gator recruiting uh, and, and the finish that the Gators had uh, for this season. Uh, going nine and three and, and a chance for ten wins, so I think that the pieces are in place uh, for the Gators to start being uh, what, what we want them to be. So hopefully a great finish to you know finish close to the, the you know in the, in the top ten. Maybe when it's all said and done for this 2019 class, and let's uh, go ahead and get this 2020 2021 class uh, back to to the Gator standard as well. Uh, in, in recruiting. So, you know, your thoughts of a, of a top 10 finish as well. You know, it's not going to happen unless you get Elam, uh, Sa Sanders, Summerall, Zipper. You know, if you want to firmly set yourself in the top 10, you're going to have to get all those guys uh, there. So, we'll, we'll see what, how it plays out in the next uh, week or so. You know, we'll have to wait on Elam until February, but Sanders, Summerall, Zip, hey, they all could be Gators in the next week or so. And that, you know, definitely sets up Florida for a big top 10 uh, finish and, and a surge at the end. Of, uh, of getting guys in and, and making a statement on, on uh, early, during the early signing period and heading into National Silent Day.
in February. So I'm going to wrap it up here and, and finish it up for this episode. Uh, big thanks to Blake Allerman from Swamp 24-7. Go check those guys out. Uh, they'll have you covered for all the recruiting info uh, out there. It will be a busy, busy time this next week or so. Speaking of next week, uh, we'll have, uh, of course, we'll be <laughs> reviewing uh, the big uh, visit weekend that's coming up. We'll, we'll review this weekend as well. And then uh, we're working on it. We'll have Bill Sykes on next week to kind of, uh, you know, join Will, joining Will Miles and I, looking back at uh, what happens on early signing period. So be on the lookout for that next week. And uh, we'll, 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 and, um, we'll have coverage that all day on that Wednesday when, when early signing period starts. Uh, that's all I'll be concentrating on that day. So look out for some periscopes, uh, tweets uh, out there. I know a lot of you already follow me on Twitter. But, uh, you know, we'll have plenty of coverage here on Gators Breakdown to get you guys uh, reviewed for who the Gators are bringing in to be to be Gators. And I know a lot of you will be excited to, to hear from Bill and everything he brings and his thoughts on recruiting uh, out there as well. So be on the lookout for that next week as far as uh, Gators Breakdown goes. I'm the host of Gators Breakdown, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SPC. Guys and girls out there, thanks for listening to this episode of Gators Breakdown.